Hey guys, my name is Mike DeLong, um, and I am going to be going over John 17. So I'm going to do like an overview of it and some of the main themes, and then my sister Emma is going to do a little bit of spinoff of that about um, things to think about when you read it. Um, so a few things about John 17. The entire chapter is a prayer. It's Jesus' longest prayer in the Gospels, and it's also Jesus' last prayer with his disciples. He was arrested like the day after, so in a way it's kind of like Jesus' last words. Um, the prayer is known as the High Priestly Prayer, because once a year a priest would offer a sacrifice in the Holy of Holies, and it would be for all of the people of Israel, and it was called the Day of Atonement. So Jesus was acting like the High Priest who would offer the ultimate sacrifice. So that's why it's called the High Priestly Prayer. So throughout this chapter, Jesus prays for like, three different things. Um, the first one is that he would bring glory to God through his own suffering. Um, throughout this passage, Jesus reiterates his complete devotion to God the Father, even though he's on the verge of like the worst death humanity created. In a way, it's ironic because Jesus is praying that he would bring glory to God the Father through a suffering that, and a death that a criminal would endure. So it's no other father would have been glorified that way, um, except for God. He also prayed for the disciples. He prayed for about th like three things in particular about his disciples. Um, the first one is that they would be protected as they were going into the world and sharing the gospel. The second is that they would be sanctified by the truth. So Jesus wanted them not just to be saved, but to also grow in holiness toward himself. Um, the third thing is that they would be unified with each other just as he and the Father are unified. Um, he prays that God would protect his disciples and that they would be protected from the evil one while he's not physically there. Jesus also prayed for all the world, that they would all come to know him through the work of his disciples. Um, he prayed that they would eventually find the joy that Jesus himself had. Um, it's as if Jesus is now sending his disciples out just as God the Father sent him out of heaven to evangelize to all of us and to save us. This prayer is kind of an example of Jesus' intercession for us. Like, as this is Jesus' high priestly prayer, he is the ultimate example of what intercession looked like and continues to look like even today. His mission really hasn't changed much. Um, he came to this world on a mission of sacrifice, and that mission remains the exact same today. 2,000 years later, and Jesus is still interceding on behalf of all his followers. Um, this prayer is an amazing example, really, of what that sacrifice looks like. Hey guys, so my name is Emma, for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to be continuing talking about uh, John chapter 17. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is setting the scene uh, surrounding this incredibly intimate moment. So the last few chapters uh, before this cover the final moments that Jesus had with the people that he was closest to on earth. It was the Last Supper, and right before Jesus tells them that it's time to go, he prays the prayer that we just read in chapter 17. To me, this is probably one of the most climactic and intimate moments that we read about in Scripture. Then in chapter 18, uh, he gets arrested in Gethsemane, and then in chapter 19 is his brutal death. So why is this prayer so significant? So during the time that Jesus spent on earth, he said over and over again how his time had not yet come. Uh, when Jesus was talking about this, he wasn't actually talking about um, the timing of his teaching or the beginning of his ministry. He was actually talking about the timing of his death because he knew that as soon as he started to teach, each moment brought him closer to the time of his death. And now the very first verse that we read in chapter 17 is Jesus saying, it's his time. Secondly, this is the final moment when he intimately prayed to God the Father for his disciples before he went to Gethsemane. And not long after, he stepped into the garden, into the power of the devil. Uh, thirdly, often in the scriptures, it mentions Jesus going off to pray. Um, it often will say um, Jesus went off alone 
to pray, to be on his own with the Lord. Um, But the fact that we have this conversation uh, specifically written down word for word between God the Father and God the Son is kind of amazing because you get a very close glimpse of Jesus's heart and the intimacy that he and the Father share. Uh, This last moment with them where he's saying it's my time it's as if he's saying my purpose and my ministry the reason why i came down to this earth it's finally coming to an end though the saving of humanity had to be finished on the cross the last thing i'll talk about is uh, the significance of what happened right after this prayer So it says, Jesus, having prayed this prayer, left with his disciples and crossed over the brook Kidron at a place where there was a garden. He and his disciples entered it. So in this one verse, it's as if the entirety of not just Jesus's life or the Gospels, but the whole of history is coming to the most complete circle that one could imagine. All of humanity has been waiting and waiting for a savior, which started because of the fall. And doesn't it just make sense that all of this began in the garden and then the defining moments of the savior's fulfillment led him back into a garden? In Eden, you had God, the spirit of the devil, in the garden. And now in Gethsemane, you have Christ, the spirit of the devil, in the garden. And I think these parallels are definitely no coincidence. Uh, From the moment of the fall in the first garden to the moment of the arrest in the second garden, God never abandoned us through our continual sin, our bad choices, and our disobedience. How much does it speak about Christ's character and love to know that in his last moments with his disciples, he wasn't thinking of how he had to die because of them and because of their sinfulness. It was spent in prayer for them, saying, Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am. All right, so uh, we are just going to say a quick prayer right now. So if you guys could pray along with us, that would be awesome. So, dear Lord, thank you so much uh, for um, the time that we get to spend with you, um, everything that we have been able to learn together, um, even online. I thank you for this chapter of John 17, Lord, and just how it so uh, beautifully affirms your absolute love uh, and affection for your people amidst our sinfulness, Jesus. I just pray that we would take this Um, into our hearts and that you would be able to use it to teach us um, things in our own life that we might not have um, seen before. Um, Lord, I just thank you so much uh, again that we can still have fellowship and community with each other um, even though we have to be apart right now. And I do uh, pray for this virus, Jesus. I pray that Um, You would have power over it, Lord. You are fully in control. You are always so good uh, and faithful to meet our needs, Jesus, to keep us safe uh, and protect us. Lord, I just pray um, that you would have your hand over people uh, who are affected by this virus, Jesus, um, and that it would soon come to an end. So we just lift all of these things up to you, and we thank you for your beautiful blessings. In your name, amen. Amen.